tell you a little bit about what I've been working on other than providing my students with high quality math instruction. And I want to start by telling you about some of my students. So this is Jalen. Uh, as a student, uh, Jalen is patient, he's organized and detail-oriented, he's uh, a great collaborator, and he gets lost from time to time, but that's okay, because he bounces back. Uh, but Jalen's a lot more than that. Uh, Jalen's also an artist, he's a dancer, he's a poet, and he's a great storyteller. My favorite Jalen story came when I asked him what he wanted to get for Christmas. And he started telling me about how every year he woke up Christmas morning, went downstairs, and found a toothbrush in his stocking. And he just thought that it was really passive aggressive of Santa. <laughs> uh, this is Julia. Julia was our salutatorian this year, and she's the student I would go to when I needed like an answer copy, but it was too lazy to make one. She also has more than one story about pooping her pants and isn't afraid to tell you about them. Uh, this is Manuela. Uh, Manuela loves math, and when she grows up, she wants to uh, be a model, but she also wants to own her own business, and she is one of the most headstrong students that I've ever had. Uh, for instance, her favorite food is lobster, and every year on her birthday, she orders two lobsters and eats them all. She is also allergic to shellfish. <laughs> uh, I tell you these stories because uh, I think it's important to realize that my students are just more, more than just mathematicians. All right? I used to think that it was just crucial for me to know my students inside and out as mathematicians, what they're good at, what they're bad at, what they need help with. But I've realized it's important to know them a lot better than that. And they need to know me better than just a math teacher too. For instance, when I was a first year teacher, my mom passed away, and I missed four days of school for bereavement and came back, and I didn't tell any of my students about it. I didn't know how to have that conversation with them. Uh, since then, I've told my students all about my mom. I told them about how when she was in the hospital, she'd go to the gift shop and she'd buy me Beanie Babies, how she loved word games and puzzles, and how I've inherited those passions from her. Uh, these conversations don't come up authentically in a math class. I need to make space to talk to my students about who they really are. And I decided to do that by taking one day off from math every other week to have something called a restorative circle. All right, we all know that a circle is a set of points of fixed distance from the center. All right, but this automatically adjusts the structure of the classroom. I am now equal to my students. I have disrupted that hierarchy and I'm sitting there among them. We make this circle space uh, sacred to us by putting things in the middle that have special meaning to us. All right, we start our circles with inspirational quotes and we end them that way too. We use this space to, to build a community. We start by having fun, by doing some silly icebreakers, we focus on learning to listen to each other by passing around a talking piece, and we share stories about ourselves and about our lives and about our family and friends and how we feel about things. Now, not every student buys into this, and it's had its ups and downs, but some students have really bought in. This is Danielise, and in circles she's talked about how she doesn't get along with her father, how her little brother has been in and out of the hospital, and how that makes school hard for her. This is Jose, and Jose, frankly, sometimes can be a bit of a jerk. But in Circle, he has talked about how he has started to acknowledge his, when he's being selfish and arrogant and how he wants to get better at that. Uh, I think it's important for me to recognize that my students don't have the same privileges that I grew up with. All right, my students are immigrants and people of color, and uh, they have complicated families and are just have been oppressed by our society for a long time. Uh, this is Rafa and Mateus. They're two great kids with big personalities who just happen to not get along. All right, there have been a couple of times this year where they've lost their tempers and started screaming uh, hateful things at each other. And we need to think about how we react to that. All right, what happened was they got reprimanded and suspended, and it happened again and again. All right, they need somebody who can pull them together, figure out what they need, and repair the harm. All right, I've been teaching for six years and I've had students who are suspended, expelled, uh, students who have dropped out or gone to jail, and I do not want to be a cog in the school to prison pipeline. And that's why I'm working on uh, 
more than just providing my students with high quality math instruction. Thank you.